Okay, this week's project is testing some uh, AAA batteries. Um, for some reason, I seem to go through a a large amount of um, AA batteries. A lot of the sensors around the house for door and windows, um, the radiator valves, various different torches and things all use AA batteries. And in the last few weeks, I seem to have gone through and pretty much replaced nearly every battery in the house for one reason or another. Um, I know I could use rechargeables on a lot of these things, but um, things like standby torches um, don't react well to rechargeables because um, if I've got a um, an LED lens, a head torch, and if I put rechargeable batteries in it, they don't last as long. Um, but also I find every time I come to use it, the batteries are flat because the AA batteries have self-discharged over time. Um, I've got a couple of um, these um, lamps um, in a box just in case we get a power cut. So you can go to the box, take the light out, pull it, it lights up. Um, I've tried using rechargeable batteries with them in the past, but every time I've used them, um, you come to use the, bat the lamp and the batteries are dead because I've sat there for you know two years. The alkaline non-rechargeable batteries don't have that problem, so I, I tend to leave um, those with the alkaline non-rechargeable batteries um, because they're really good for standby usage. Um, also things like the, the cat flap, um, smart cat flap that reads the microchips on the cats. The rechargeable batteries need to be replaced every week. Um, non recharged ones tend to do two or three weeks at least. Um, so I do try and use rechargeables on the cat flaps, but if I'm going away on holiday or something, then I pop alkalines in because it's going to last for the duration of me being away. Um, so... I decided I was going to go on to Amazon, of course, and order a, um, a another load of um, AA batteries. And, you know, you go onto Amazon, search for AA batteries, and you, the Amazon ones seem to be the, uh, the ones that get listed at, at the top. You know, other, other, other batteries underneath your normal Duracells and your Energizers and your Panasonic and stuff like that come to underneath. And so sort of one thing I came to realise is that none of the battery manufacturers actually advertise the capacity of the batteries on their listings anymore so you know you're getting a double a battery but you don't know how much electricity you're actually getting inside it um you know time was you'd uh, buy a packet of double a batteries and it would actually have the capacity uh, in um, written on on the packet in milliamp hours you know 1800 milliamp hours 2400 milliamp hours um these days that, that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore so um, so you don't know what you're getting. So what I decided to do was I ordered a pack of everything and decided that what I would do is go through and test them to actually find out which ones were actually value for money. Um, so I uh, I went to Amazon and basically ordered a packet, the smallest packet I could, of all of the, basically the top listings. So I ended up with a, a packet of eight Amazon Basics. Uh, a packet of four Kodak uh, double A's, a packet of ten Pro Cells, and a packet of uh, ten Energizers, um, a packet of ten Panasonic. Didn't realise Maplin still existed actually, but I managed to get twelve of their double A batteries, um, twelve Dura Cells. And some Vartas, um, eight of those. And I got 20 batteries from JCB. It was listed as a packet of 20, but it actually came down as two 10 packs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and test all of these um, and figure out how much uh, power is actually in, um, in each one. So what I've done is I've made up a spreadsheet which just lists out um, the brands of batteries that I, that I, that I purchased. Um, I'm clicking in, into the wrong window here. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's just got a list of the, the brands here. Um, I'm going to fill in the date that they purchased, uh, the date that they were tested, and what the advertised expiry date is on the sales. Um, one thing I did notice is um, some of the sales that have actually been dispatched by Amazon are old. So 
um, like the, the 10 year shelf life energizers, um, will go to 2033 and they were manufactured in December, uh, 2023. So they're, they're okay. Um, but I did note that the Panasonic's, um, advertise a, um, is it the Panasonic's one of them offered, um, advertised a, um, 12 year shelf life, but they're already, um, in, uh, to, like two, two years into their, um, two years in to be advertised uh, life expectancy is actually the codex so the 10 year the codex actually advertised a 10 year life uh a 10 year guarantee but they're only going to go to or are only guaranteed till uh, march 2031 so these must have been manufactured in march 2021 so they've already had, already had a couple of years not that i expect them to still be in existence by then i would have used them by then um but if you're buying them to put into a, a go bag or a an emergency kit or something like that and you think you're gonna get they'll be okay in there for 10 years and you know just check check the expiries because uh, my experience is uh there may be old cells by the time you've um by the time you've received them um so one thing i've done is i've added up um the prices that are, that are listed on here actually the xvat prices because i'm in guernsey we don't pay vat um so this is xvat price um i put the pack sizes on here and then i've worked out the uh, the size per cell um, I deliberately didn't go and buy, you know, a quantity, uh, the same quantity of cells for each, um, you know, for each uh, brand because I I didn't want to be lumbered with a whole load of, uh, you know, rub potentially rubbish batteries or more than I need. Um, so um, I wasn't going to buy, you know, twenty of each. And often the pack sizes aren't available in, you know, to buy the same quantity of each. So I've literally gone and bought the smallest quantity of each cell that I could. Um, so yeah you can you can sort of see here the you know the four cell kodak pack works out quite expensive at 92 pence per per cell but if you go and buy the jcb pack 20 cells for five pound 82 you know you actually get them for 29 pence each which is is kind of much more reasonable um kind of one thing that did surprise me was the cost of the um the amazon basics i felt was quite high at 61 pence maybe buying the Vartas um eight pack you know you get them for for 68 pence um you know i'm not sure you're getting a particularly good value on on the amazon basics in that in that packet pack quantity anyway um also on the uh the spreadsheet i started to add um like a, a rated milliamp power which is what the manufacturer claims um that the battery should have but as i was looking through and going through each one none of them seem to actually advertise the uh capacity of the um of the cells um uh, which i f found quite, uh, quite surprising um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to test four cells from each manufacturer okay so i'm just about to do the first test on the first amazon basics battery this uh cell is got best before date of uh, april 2020 2033 so um I'm filming this at the end of January, uh, 2024. So these um, these cells are just under a year old at this point. I reckon they were manufactured from this date. We've probably got a 10-year life shelf, so a shelf life. So they are um, were probably manufactured in April, 2023. So I'm going to do the first test on the first <clears throat> on the first battery, and I'm going to do the, t the tests um, uh, in. I'm going to do all of the first tests of all of the first cells first and all of the second cells together, etc. So uh, I can rapidly build, get start to get a, a feel for what is a good and bad test. Um, so I'm going to test the first Amazon Basics and I'm going to test the first probably Energizer and then the first JCB, Maplin, etc. I'm going to run, run through, run down the list. So first Amazon Basics battery going in now. <coughs> the... Um, Cell voltage not under load is 1.54 volts, and um, just need to check that the discharge um, tester is going to test down to 0 0.8 volts. P is basically the finishing point, so um, click OK on that. And the over test has begun, um, so it's pulling about 380 amp uh, milliamps, and the uh, yeah 387 mils, and the volts under load is 1.42 so 
So I'm going to leave this run through to completion. Okay, so the first uh, Amazon battery is finished and that gave a tested capacity of 1,767 milliamps. So I'm going to move on and uh, do the next one shortly. Okay, so next on the list is Duracell. And I don't know whether these are marked. Yeah, so this is marked with uh, 03 2033. So about the same as the Amazon Basics uh, for shelf life and probably the manufacturing date as well. So let's pop this in the tester. Yeah, 1.56 volts. And we're going to test it down to 0.8 volts. So that's the, that's the test started. So I'll uh, check back uh, when this has uh, been depleted. So the Duracell has completed and it's uh, 1,799 milliamps. Um, I've entered that in the, uh, the spreadsheet. Um, so next up is uh, an energizer, uh, industrial. Uh, branded one and this is dated uh, December uh, 2033 for the um, shelf life so the expiry date so this must have been manufactured if it's got a 10 year shelf life it must have been manufactured around December 2023 so this one isn't particularly old so let's um, pop the Duracell out. Uh, just reset this, I think. Pop that in. 1.58 volts. So I'll enter that into the, uh, the spreadsheet in a second. And we're going to discharge this to 0 0.8. Okay. Begin. So we're going to see how long that lasts. So the next one to be tested is the uh, the JCB, uh, best before uh, twenty thirty. So let's um, connect up the meter. In one point five five volts. Um, of the cell not under load so let's get this set for uh, 0.8 and start it off there we go all right we'll come back to this later okay so the jcb has just finished and that came in at 1726 milliamps um which is actually the lowest so far um according to the spreadsheet because of the cost of these these are actually the um the most efficient at the moment um next up on the test on the uh on the kodak just find those okay so the kodaks are up next these are shelf stable apparently until march 2031 10-year guarantee so that must make these already it's about kind of three years old. Um, so, yeah, 10 year guarantee from when they're manufactured. Um, I don't know how long Amazon's had them sitting on the shelf for. So, I've got three years from the sound of it. Right, so, let's take out this uh, JCB, reset the meter. What do you reckon the voltage is going to be for this one offload? 1.54 volts. Let me just type that in. And let's get this set for 0.8. And start. Alright, I'll come back to this when this one's finished. So that's 1,334 milliamp hour on... Uh, on the, the Kodak cell, which is by far the uh, the worst result yet um, for the highest cost batteries. These uh, batteries were around 93 pence each for the uh, for the forum testing. With. So let's 
so I don't think um, Kodak is going to come out on top in any way, shape or form. So next up is the Maplin uh, batteries. They're probably not manufactured by Maplin directly, they're obviously rebranded because Maplin used to be a catalogue supply company back in the day. Um, so the best before in these is June 2033. So they were probably made June last year. Um, June uh, 2023, it's uh, February 2024 now. So, um, pop the battery in, take a note of the voltage uh, offload, 1.5.6, uh, I know it peaked up to 1.57, but it's actually settling on 1.56, let's put that in the sheet, 1.56. Set the testing down to 0.8 volts and hit go. And I'm going to check on this a little bit later on. Okay, so the mapping comes out at 1977 milliamps. That actually puts the, uh, the mapping in second place now, which is uh, remarkable, really. Um, that's um, currently second place for capacity and for. Um, the price per 100 milliamps. So let's um, take the Maplin out now and add it to the pile of flats. And we're onto the Panasonics. And the Panasonic is uh, unmarked on the battery as to its expiry date. But the And the packet it doesn't really say. Oh, no, it does. So the packet says uh, best before eleven twenty six. So best before November twenty twenty six. Hasn't got near. And they feel re these feel really light as well. These feel much lighter than uh, than any of the other cells. So I'm not holding out a lot of hope for these because. Uh, we all know electricity weighs something, yeah. Uh, right, so that goes in there. Uh, let's offer it some uh, USB power. The uh, offload voltage is 1.59, so I'll just put that in the spreadsheet. Uh, 1.59 is the highest uh, voltage uh, not under load. Set the dropout voltage to 0.8 and off we go. So I'll uh, check in on this in a bit. Uh, after the Panasonics uh, is the uh, Procell and the Nevada. So we're nearly coming to the end of the, uh, the first run. Okay, so the Panasonic battery did uh, absolutely terribly. 280 milliamp hours uh, so that's the that's incredibly incredibly bad um be interesting to see if the uh, the other tests are like that whether that's just a fluke um i suspect because of the weight yeah, as i said before the battery felt a lot lighter than the others um i suspect that it's it's just a really really rubbish cell this this literally feels like it weighs nothing Compared to this Pro Cell, this feels like it weighs about half. So, yeah, not impressed with that at all. It'd be interesting to see how the other three go. Um, right, so next up is the Pro Cell. And these are uh, marked on the box as best before end uh, March 2027. So, there's only three more years of uh, shelf life on those. Um, no indication on the box as to when it was uh, when it was manufactured though, so um, we'll see how this goes. Okay, put some batteries in the holder, power to the controller, uh, charger, discharger. Uh, 1.55 is the starting voltage, so I'll mark that down on the spreadsheet. Um, 
and set the end voltage at 0.8 and go. So I'll check check back in on uh, on this in a bit. Okay, so the Procell scored 1,660 milliamps, uh, which is reasonably good, I think. Looking at the sheet, so um, let's get the last one in, which is the uh, Levato. There doesn't appear to be any markings on this for uh, the best before date. Um, it looks like it's marked with the year, the manufacturing date, 0323. Um, that's that's it. So let's get the Procell out and add it to the pile of flat batteries. Uh, 1.58 is the. Let's call it 1.58. 1.58 is the starting voltage. And let's get the test begin. Begun. There we go. So I'll come back to this one a bit later. That's actually really impressive. Novata's done 1,987 milliamps, um, which is actually second only to the uh, to the Energizer. Um, I thought these were going to be uh, be quite rubbish, but um, they're not. They've actually done really, really well. Um, so that's the te end of the testing of the first of each of the, the batteries. Um, I'm going to go on and test um, another three sets of each, so I get an average over the, the four batteries. But I'm not going to um, film and edit in each one because otherwise it's just going to be um a very long uh, video of me popping batteries in and swapping them over so um i've done the the, the first first ones and filmed them to evidence the the values on the on the initial run i'm not expecting them to differ too much if they do then i'm gonna I'll, I'll, then i'll document it um but um yeah i'm gonna crack on and, uh, and get the rest of these done and um get the all of the data populated in the spreadsheet okay so the results are in um i've had to put my uh, picture up in the uh, top corner of um of this video so the uh, the spreadsheet's down there somewhere um with all the the results in so i went through and tested four of each battery uh one after the other uh as i uh, as i said earlier and um I've taken a note of the starting voltage of each cell and the end result for the capacity for each for each one. So the result at the end is an average of the four. And looking at some of the details as to the spread of the uh, the capacity is quite interesting actually as well. Um, I've seen other YouTube videos where people have done the same thing and they've only tested one cell, and I don't think that's particularly representative really. Um, so hence doing the four um the i've noted the expiry down on the spreadsheet as well on the country of origin where it's available for jcbs don't um don't state their uh, country of manufacture um the uh price per pack the quantities here and the price per cell is also here um, none of them have got a rated milliamp hour uh, rating as well um now it is interesting to see the JCBs were the only ones that I got in a pack size of 20 because it was the smallest one they did. I think that's affected the price per cell because it's, it's a lot lower um, on these than the others. So one of the results at the end for the uh, price per milliamp hour is skewed, um, probably because of um, because of this result, uh, because of the, the quantity of the batteries purchased in this case. Um, so let's scroll along so here are the results for the four tests um there will be a link in the description for um uh, a read copy of this uh, this spreadsheet if you wanted to download and have a look at it um 
so most of the batteries seem to perform about the same on each on each pass some of these like the duracell here 1799 the next one was 1845 2008 1847 um you know they're, they're within a, a small a small amount of uh, of each one um the panasonics were consistently poor and um looking at the packaging it says um that they're designed for use in low power devices um which um is for things like remote controls and i don't know why you do that because they're quite expensive to buy so i don't know why you'd spend a lot of money on a battery with not much power in it um that doesn't seem to make much sense um but when you see on the packaging that the batteries say oh we last seven times longer uh, than any other than you know, other batteries i think they're using the panasonics as a yardstick obviously because you know these panasonics have done about a seventh of the uh the capacity of the of the other cells so um i think um all these manufacturers are saying uh, well we are seven times better than any other battery being the, the panasonic so i think these are the uh, the whipping boy of um of batteries i think so um what i'll probably do is move these uh i, I, I don't think i'll do panasonics again um if i if i repeat this test um because there's no point they're uh complete rubbish i think i, I don't know i i struggle to think why they even exist actually um so there's the results of the four battery tests um look at them at, at your leisure on the link below um i'm gonna have a look at the the averages and the comparisons in a second so the averages are here um for start uh, starting voltage and for the uh, milliamp hours um and the end voltage wasn't 2.6 the end voltage was uh 0.8 in all cases um i've then done a calculation to say uh, based on the cost and the average milliamp hour for all of the cells how much that actually cost um for the capacity um what i thought was then interesting to do as an afterthought was what was the lowest capacity and the highest capacity cells and what was the what was the spread um so this column here goes through using an excel formula max and looks at what the maximum recorded uh, value for milliamp hours was this one does the same for the minimum and then there's a calculation based on um what the variance is so you know we can see from here that um jcbs they only seem to have a 2.1 percent variance um other batteries uh like panasonic uh, 11 percent variance so on, on, on a poor battery um you know it's more than 10 percent out or can be more than 10 percent out between cells so um you know the maplins did uh did quite well uh only two point what two point one percent so if we go and look at the capacity chart the the batteries that did the best seem to be uh energizer industrial in fact the first four here are all within a fraction of each other uh, energizer industrial maplin varta and duracell um they are pretty pretty consistent and then it sort of starts to drop off after that to the amazon basics jcb Procell, kodak and and the panasonic um we'll say about one for 300 milliamps or so average between between the Procell and and the energizer that uh yeah, that's still quite still quite close. You know, depending on if you if there's three hundred milliamps difference between say the Procell and the Energizer, but you can get the battery ten percent cheaper. You know, that would make the the Procell a more viable alternative. Yeah, you know, depending on the, the the cost. Um, so if we look at the cost to capacity. Um, sheet. The ones that did the best were the JCB. But as I said earlier, they the JCBs I bought and I could only get in in a, a minimum volume of twenty batteries, uh, which is far more than than the others. So 
um, I think that that is slightly skewed um, to give uh, and is giving it a, a false um, value uh, calculation on this. Um, the next one is um, the Maplin, which did really well. I was surprised that the Maplins are actually so good. Um, the Anodizer Industrial Duracell and then, yeah, Amazon Basics, Varta Procell. Um, Kodak comes basically second to last in the uh, capacity um, and the cost per 100 milliamp hours as well as Kodak and Procell. So, yeah, the batteries that I would tend to stick to um, would be um, would be things like the Energizer Industrial um, Maplin. Yeah, I, I'd uh, I'd quite happily spend my money on Varta as well. Varta surprised me as well. I always thought, you know, you, you tend to see them stacked on the uh, you know if you go to B and Q or you know any of the big box DIY sh uh, shops, you. Yeah, I always remember seeing them there, just thinking, oh, you know, they can't be as good as an Energizer or a Drewer so I'm just like kind of dismissing them. But you know, actually, they're um they're right up there. In fact, they did better than Duracell in this test, and um were uh, what's that? Three forty three ish. Um, yeah, fifty milliamps off of the uh, off of the the Energizer Industrial on on an average of four. Of four batteries, um, you know, so I, I'd quite happily buy Varta again, um, uh, you know, any, any day of the week, you know, just uh, maybe not the Panasonic, yeah, um, so yeah, so the price per million power charts here, um, the capacity chart, you know, if you can buy, um, a quantity of batteries at a, um, at a discount, um, then. Um, that may well change what the uh, which is the, the cheapest for the for the capacity. So you know, in this test, JCB turned out best for me, but I managed to get a high or I accidentally could only get a higher quantity for batteries. Yeah, Maplin were the um, the next best value, followed by Energizer. I might have a quick look around now and um, see. Uh, if I was to buy a hundred of uh, each of these batteries, you know what the uh, what the value would be, um, and uh, yeah, excellent. Okay, so just because I decided to have a look at what um, the cost of buying batteries in a higher volume, higher quantity uh, would uh, would look like. So I just had a look around and I found I could buy Amazon Basics in packs of 100, Energizer Industrial in 48s, Kodaks in 60s, Maplins in 120s, Pro Sales in 50s, and Vartas in packets of 100. I didn't really bother looking for Panasonic because there's nothing they could do to, um, you know, the batteries could be nearly free and you'd be changing them so often you'd have to change them, what, 10 times for every other, every one battery so they're not viable at all. Um, JCBs I couldn't find in a package quantity above 20 and uh, same for Juris I really couldn't find anything uh, on Amazon at the moment um, that uh, had a higher package quantity than 12 um, that was in, in stock anyway um, so um, if you were to buy a packet of 8 Amazon Basics battery they cost you 61 pence each if you buy a pack of 100 they're 22 that's a difference of 39 pence uh, Energizer Industrial, 48 pence uh, in a bag of 10, box of 10. Uh, if you buy 48, they're 44 pence, 4 pence cheaper. Kodak, uh, 92 pence each, which is really was quite expensive in a packet of 4. But if you buy a packet of 60, to go down to 33 pence each. That's 58 pence difference. Maplin, 42p. If you buy in a packet of 12, if you get, buy a packet of 120, you get them for 25 pence each. Uh, pro sale 61 pence in a small pack 46 pence in a big pack 15 pence per sale cheaper um, Varta um, 68 pence in a packet of 8 and if you buy a box of 100 you get them for 36 pence each so what does that do to the um, price per 100 milliamp hours uh, let's have a look on the, on the chart so unsurprisingly Amazon Basics 
uh, comes in at uh, one of the cheapest. It's actually on a par with uh, with Maplin, so they're uh, they're both the same price. If you buy a quantity of Maplins, you get them for the same price as Amazon Base, or the same price per hundred million hours as the as the Amazons. Uh, they're closely ish followed by JCB and Varta, and then after that it starts to drop off uh, value wise. Uh, Panasonic's uh, no contender at all. So, what would I buy if I was buying a quantity of batteries? Honestly, I'd just buy the Maplins. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't bother with the Amazon Basics. Um, although if you bought 150, maybe the Amazon Basics is a much better quant uh, uh, value proposition. Um, I'm not going to go and look at that, um, but I will consult this spreadsheet as and when I'm uh, looking to purchase a quantity of batteries to make sure I'm getting the best value for money. Um, link in the description um and feel free to look at it and download it comment like comment and subscribe um you won't be able to click the link because i don't have enough views or subscribers or anything yet to um enable the feature on youtube that lets people click links so you'll have to copy and paste it into your web browser um or drop a comment i get so few comments i can respond to all of them um and i will um tell you how to uh, how to access the spreadsheet um if you um go onto the data field and fill in your own your own costs um when you go over to the uh, cost chart here uh, you can literally do a right click and a refresh and that updates the chart and puts it in with your values you know if you if you can buy um duracells at you know the equivalent of 10 pence each they're going to be better value for you than um the map that you're going to pay 25 pence for it just depends what you can get the batteries at um this sheet will calculate it based on the capacity um you know even, even like with a panasonics even if you get them for a penny i don't think they'd be value for money even even then you know um yeah excellent all right i'll uh, see you in the next one